believe the corona pandemic to be a um, a part of a bigger bi biblical plan or is it just uh, mm. Yeah, nothing that happens in history is totally irrelevant. But if the question is really implying, well, it is COVID-19 and pandemics and vaccines, is all this specifically in so many words prophesied in the Bible? Well, no, no, it isn't. Bible prophecy about the last days is focused upon the land that was promised to Abraham. And the whole burden of Bible prophecy relates to that area and to situations affecting Israel and their relationship with their neighbors around them. That mm -hmm. is the focus of Bible prophecy. And yeah, the Lord Jesus does talk about a time of trouble such as never was coming upon the earth with men's hearts fainting them, failing them for fear and fainting because they are worried about what shall happen to the earth. Mm. That's in Luke 21. And yes, you can understand the pandemic in, in those terms. And also we are told that the gospel of the kingdom shall go into all the world and then shall the end come. So the gospel is gonna spread. And what I saw in the pandemic was without question, a lot of people starting to think about God and going online and coming to people like ourselves or others and finding answers and coming to Jesus Christ. Mm. And so I cannot say that this was not used by God without doubt it was used by God, but in a more general way, I don't accept that, for example, vaccines are the mark of the beast or anything like that. When you actually look at what is the mark of the beast, it's in the a context of who the beast is, which is an entity dominating Israel in the last days. I, I think uh, a lot of the talk about, uh, about these vaccines being some sort of mark of the beast, I think this is what I would call opportunistic interpretation of the Bible. That, oh, hey, you know, this, uh, this sounds like the pandemic, or oh, this sounds like a vaccine. Well, that's surface level reading of the Bible. And that, that is not how God intended. And you, you, you can try and make everything in life relevant to some out of context half verse in the Bible if you want to. But that is not the way to read the Bible. And it's not the way to interpret the Bible. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And, and in the past, there's been so many plagues. Uh, so, so, so many plagues worse than this one. And was in this pandemic so what if we think that covid has anything to do with the bible or the biblical text then um, those, those plagues and illnesses would have also or could have also um been biblical and um, I, I i guess it's just because with um, with what's happening with israel and how the world's going worse and worse day by day it just uh, seems it seems relevant relevant but yeah as you said it's not it's not it's not written and as you say i mean there have always been plagues and pandemics uh probably far greater than and certainly far more damaging in terms of death rates than covid mm. were they prophesied in the bible well not per, not per se as far as i can see um, and the whole issue is God's focus is upon the land promised to Abraham. That, that is the focus of Bible prophecy. And of course, we who don't live in those areas, we are living where? In Australia, in Finland, in Latvia, in America, UK or somewhere, Russia. We want to see our little country there in you know, Bible prophecy. And mm. we are significant. Well, I'm afraid... No, the, the focus of the Bible is specifically in terms of prophecy upon the land promised to Abraham. Yeah. Feel free, Mark, uh, Joe, whoever, to uh, chip in. Yes, do, do feel free to. Well, uh, <clears throat> when the pandemic started, way back when, I forget what it was now. Hello, I'm under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was on a, on a building site. Listen, Australia had 
nothing as far as COVID was concerned, but everyone was in a panic. So I'll tell you what, if you're in some countries, you should panic. But here, little old Perth, Western Australia, <laughs> little isolated spot, I was on this building site and um, one of the interior decorators, she was very stressed out. You know? mm. She's got young kids, mum on her own. And uh, anyway, I, I tried to strike up a conversation and trying to lay their fears and what have you. Uh, I, uh, I tried to say to her that, you know, uh, we have comforts and reassurance in Jesus and all that sort of stuff, well, in one ear and out the other. Anyway, before I before I was going to leave the building site, I went out to the van and got a Bible companion uh, little card, you know, to bring it into her. And I, I said, listen, can you do me a favour? If, you, if you're really stressed out and worried, take this and download it on your telephone and just sit quietly with a cup of tea and listen to it each night. And she looked at the little card in my hand and she went, no, 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 I don't want that. And she backed away, right? And I was absolutely amazed that here was the lady that was stressed out, thinking that it was some sort of, you know, judgment on the earth and these, her children are going to be wiped out. And, you know, and she was like so stressed out for her mother and all that sort of stuff. You know, but take the Bible companion app card. No way. No, she was not going to enter into that. <laughs> it's just so odd. <clears throat> yeah, I think I've, um, I've personally told myself, oh, God has told me to, to always just believe and trust in his plan, even if this did ha have something to do with the uh, world ending. Um, it, it, I could... Um, how would I put this? I, I can lay restful because I know where we are going and I know that everything's going to be okay. I, everything's going to be okay with him. And even if I died right now, everything's going to be okay. Yeah, amen. I mean, that, that's, that's the point. That, you know, even if you are scribbled in this life and you die in an unusual way, and oh, okay. And the best is ahead. Yeah. I've got some uh, Christian friends over in Sri Lanka and um, they message me from time to time on WhatsApp. And quite a number of them have said, you know, oh, please pray, you know, that this pandemic passes because it's pretty tough over there for them, you know, like really tough. And I tried to figure out what words I was going to say to, to them. And uh, so I said, well, um, I, I don't, listen, I'll, I'll definitely remember you in my prayers, as I always do, um, in your difficult situations, even without the pandemic, they're in difficult situations. And so I do remember them in my prayers. And I will remember them in the prayers, read the pressure, extra pressure that COVID's bringing on. But I did write to one of them, I said, well, I don't, I don't necessarily feel comfortable in praying to God and saying, oh, please, can you remove, you know, COVID-19 from off the earth? Mm. But what I would rather, what I'd rather say to you, my, my dear sister, this is a lady over in Sri Lanka, uh, let's pray with thankfulness that even if the worst happened, even if the worst happened, uh, we have eternal life in the kingdom. And this is our greatest joy, no matter what situations we're facing. Let's see, there are other people that are facing life, life-threatening situations in Iran, Afghanistan, uh, threatened to be killed because of their Christianity. Well, this is not a pandemic, but it's, it's still a death threat, you know? So, uh yeah, our greatest comfort is the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus, no matter what we're facing. Mm. Yeah, it's come, come. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, the only other thing I also oh. think of too is that with, with this COVID, some people think it might be like a divine, divine judgment, you know, divine judgment on people. Well, well no, I think the reality is that from what reports we're led to believe, 
it has something to do with people fiddling around with um, mutations of genes and viruses and stuff that like that, or uh, eating unhealthy food. No, this is just, if anything, man doing the wrong thing, I think. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, I do. I must say I do sometimes, and now we're just going on and on in the subject, but um, I do often feel strange to, even if, even if somebody is ill and I'm praying for their illness to be gone, it's, um, it always comes down to his will be done. And, and I, will say, I will say to him, I'd appreciate it if you heal this person, because this person is also um, a warrior of Jesus. This person is also fighting for you. So I would appreciate it so that our ranks don't have to decrease. But at the same time, if it's your will for this person to remain ill, that rhymes, then um, so be it. Your, <laughs> your will be done. Yeah, when you think of Hezekiah, who was mortally ill and who was God said, you're going to die. And he said, oh, I don't want to die. And God said, oh, I'll give you another 15 years. But in those 15 years, he messed up. Mm. He turned away from God, as I understand it. And you look at the life of Hezekiah and you think you'd have done better to just uh, just duck well, out and God gave you the chance. Um, and then you'd be in the kingdom, but you want to kick around here for a bit longer. So and then you got lifted up with pride and all that and became materialistic and you lost the plot. You'd have done better to, you know, die young, stay pretty kind of, kind of thing in, in, in spiritual terms. Um, yeah, so I hear what you're saying, Steady. I also have that difficulty when it comes to praying for people's healing. Mm. But yes, I do. Um, and I just pray that God will be glorified through them getting better. But that I always like to sort of add, and please get him or get her into your kingdom, please. Yes. Um, because that, that's the essence. I mean, how long you cough and hike your way through this life is really quite irrelevant, whether you die at 20 or you die at 100. I mean, well, that's nothing compared to infinity in front of you. It's really mm. nothing. But unless you've got the perspective of the kingdom, of course, well, it is a big difference dying at 20 or, you know, cough and hacking your way through till you're 100. I mean, yeah. 